All right, you're up. <laughs> so the next gas law we're going to take a look at is called Charles Law. And Charles Law is a relationship between temperature and volume. Now, I, I know last time we talked about pressure. Where did pressure go? Uh, pressure, in this case, we're going to hold pressure constant. So this is a kind of a, a controlled environment where temperature and volume can change, but pressure cannot change. Okay, so there's, we're not talking about pressure. It's, pressure is the same in all of these problems. Uh, well, the temperature and the volume, they are a little different than the last one. They are directly proportional to each other. So that means that if temperature goes up, volume goes up too. And if the gas temperature goes down, the volume will also go down. You can see that with this animation here. Um, the molecules are, you can see the thermometer, they're getting warmer. Uh, what does it mean when they're getting warmer? What are the molecules doing? So temperature is essentially a measurement of the average kinetic energy of the molecules, so that means they're moving faster. Okay, so increased temperature, they move faster, mm -hmm. and it looks like the volume got bigger because they were moving faster and they kind of pushed the, the piston up. Exactly, exactly. So the volume, they expand when they get bigger. Right, because we want, we want pressure to stay constant, so that means the volume is going to have to change to keep that constant pressure. All right, so let, there's no better way to demonstrate Charles' law than putting helpless peeps in a microwave. So... What's actually happening here? Well, the, the microwave is heating up the marshmallow. Yeah, so it's making the marshmallow get nice and hot. Did you know that there's actually gas inside of the marshmallow, like trapped because it's so sticky? So, yeah, well, yeah, that makes sense, right? Because they're fluffy. Yeah, it's the fluff. So those gas particles, you can see them. They're inside the marshmallow and they're trapped. They can't get out. And the microwave is heating up those pockets of gas, causing the gas to expand inside the peep, and the peep is suffering helplessly <laughs> inside the microwave. So you can see increased temperature, increased volume. Don't you hate it when you open a brand new bag of potato chips and there's nothing inside but air? It's half filled with air. It's like they're almost gone. Uh, why do they do that? Well, it's actually because of Charles' law. Uh, you see there's air in the bag. There's a volume. And that volume is at certain temperatures and pressures. So if we have a bag that has 220 milliliters of gas in it, temperature of 23 degrees, that's a pretty comfortable room temperature. But let's say that bag of chips is in a car in southern Florida at 55 degrees. What's going to happen to the gas inside that bag? What's going to happen to the air inside? It's going to expand because Charles Law tells us that. So we need to know how much, and they need to calculate uh, at the potato chip factory, how much air to actually put in so that those bags don't burst. 23 degrees Celsius is our initial temperature. Celsius is a problem though, so we need to convert it to Kelvin. And we do that by adding 273, we get 296 Kelvin. Those are my initial conditions. I don't know what the final volume is going to be, that's what I want to figure out because that bag needs to be able to hold up temperatures, uh, let's say southern Florida um, or even in the Caribbean, let's say it's 55 degrees Celsius, which doesn't mean much to you or an I, but that's 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That definitely happens in parts of the world and there's record temperatures I'm sure above that with just the heat. Change it to Kelvin and we get 328. So is that bag going to handle that new 55 degrees? Charles Law tells us that the temperature is going from 296 to 308. So if the temperature increases, the volume is also going to increase. It's going to expand. So 220 milliliters is going to get bigger. So I need to take my temperatures and make a ratio to make them get bigger. That means the bigger temperature goes on top, 328 Kelvin over 296 Kelvin. Units cancel out, Kelvin over Kelvin, and I'm left with milliliters, which is good. And we get an answer of 244 milliliters. 
So they need room for that gas to expand 24 more milliliters inside the bag. So they have to leave some extra room in there uh, filled up uh, so the air can expand without breaking the bag open. And I've got three sig figs to start with, and I need three in my answer, so that one's good. Let's take a look at another example. Uh, if you have a balloon in liquid nitrogen, always fun. Uh, liquid nitrogen is stinking cold, negative 210 degrees Celsius. If we had an initial volume of 90 liters and an initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, what is the final volume? All right. Quick look at our numbers here. I have nine zero liters. That's an L, maybe. <laughs> and an initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius plus 273. To put that into Kelvin, we get 293. Again, that's around room temperature, like 20 degrees Celsius, 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, we know the temperature of liquid nitrogen, negative 210. This is why we need to convert it to Kelvin. Negative numbers in the Celsius scale uh, just don't follow the gas laws. They, they just don't really work when you're setting up your ratios. So that's only 63 Kelvin. That's pretty close to absolute zero. Uh, liquid nitrogen is pretty cold. We want to know what the final volume is going to be, so we use our temperatures to find that. The temperature, when you put it in the liquid nitrogen, is definitely going down. So we are going to want our volume to go down as well, because it's going to shrink. By how much? That depends on the temperature ratio. It's going down, um, so I need to put my smaller number on top so that my ratio is less than 1. 63 over 293 will give me a number less than 1 and make my volume decrease. My units cancel out in Kelvin, and if I solve that problem there with two significant figures, I get 0 0.19 liters the volume inside the balloon actually shrank uh, quite a bit uh, from 0.9 to 1.19 and we can see that that follows Charles Law. If you've ever seen a balloon in liquid nitrogen, it does indeed get smaller.